so like I said, what I really want to do is finish off our last uh, lecture here, right? For this for this project, anyways. Um, I wanted to show you tiling texture on the room really quick, right? Um, so in this case, uh, you might even separate your floor from your uh, the rest of it just to give it a different tile. Um, if you need to do that, right, go to three for face mode. Uh, you can easily, once you've got that face mode selected, remember, you can always do things like uh, circle select, right, Q. Remember, toggles you through your different selection types up here. The one with the circle, right, the kind of dashed orange circle is uh, circle select. And that's your equivalent to drag select, right? You just hold down left mouse button, move your cursor, right? You hold down shift, it'll add. And you just go in there and kind of just add that little bit of the bottom here. And what you can always do is take an object, right? And you could right click. Remember, right click brings up our, our context menus. In this case, it's face context. If you want to have the same tile on the floor, at the end of the day, it's OK. It's more that you're showing me you can do this, right? That's not uh, a big part of this is just make sure you guys know some fundamental skills, right? Not that you're necessarily perfect at doing all this stuff yet, but you know, it is a high school class. <laughs> um, separate selection right so you can actually separate a model by a selection and what that does that actually breaks this into its own object right so now the floor is its own separate object so i can easily just you know click on the floor here and remember to create a new material right you can see how room's still on both of these now i click on this you know the red uh sphere here and you see that there is it's still room I want to create a new material. So what I can do is I can go over a few from the name, right? Remember red ball. See rooms kind of already the text, the material on everything. And I can go to the two kind of, it looks like two white pages over them. One's got like a little kind of dog ear on it, that little bend at the corner. It's right next to the X. If I click on that, it creates a new one called room.001. And what I can do is I can just call this room floor, right? And now you'll see there's two different materials, right? There's the room material. And there's the room floor material. So adding a new material is pretty easy. Uh, it does tend to be easier to do it to separate objects. I find it's a little weird and um, not exactly ideal for specific polygons. Um, in this case, it's just a little bit easier for us to do it on um, separate objects. And it's a great way to see that you can actually take a selection and separate it into its own object, right? So there we go. Room, room floor. Now, what does tiling texture in imply? Well, I'm going to go to the room itself, and I'll kind of turn on the uh, EV material preview again right there, right? So remember, there's wireframe, there's shaded, there's that third sphere that looks a lot like the material one, because it's basically material preview. Um, that really shows you the full material effects and a, a bit of EV lighting, if you've got it set up properly, texturing. And when I click on this object, of course, room material is there, and we see the UV grids plugged in. Now, remember, you could actually click on the X here to unplug that, right? The image texture node's still plugged in, but when you click on X, it kind of deep unplugs, gets rid of that. You can make a new one. You can replug it back in. It's still available, right? If you click on that little white triangle, um, white sphere one. But in this case, I want to tile the texture. Now, the cool thing about environment stuff is that, not cool, but it's what we usually have to do, Oftentimes you have a brick, and if you set that brick up so that it repeats pretty naturally and doesn't look like it has seams, that's what we call a tiled texture, right? That means that you're going to have that texture repeat over the model. And this is a way to take a small texture and make it act big, right? So you can get a 1024 brick or stone, and it actually ends up covering like 20,000, 30,000 pixels worth of detail in the room. You do get that repetition, right? But um, if you've got it set up pretty well and it's pretty seamless, right? Usually kind of the edges are cropped so that the edges match pretty well. It's what we call a seamless or tileable texture. Um, in this case, it doesn't have to be perfect. You can always do a Google search for seamless tileable textures. Textures.com, I think, even has a, um, a section for seamless or it'll, it'll tell you so you can kind of look in there. But in this case, I'm going to open up something because you don't always have to paint a texture you can actually apply a pre-existing image. So in this case, instead of clicking new for the base color, I can click on open. And this is where I can go back to my stencils, right? Uh, this one right here gives you thumbnails. 
And you'll notice that this texture actually does repeat pretty well because you see how kind of the edges are cut so that this side matches that side, right? So these are already work pretty seamless, right? Um, and I'll use this one for the walls. Now, in this case, that looks a little bit big, right? So one of the easiest ways to tile textures is to actually scale the UVs, right? So if I say go to 3 for face mode, right? I'll just go back to my regular kind of selection tool. Control A to select all, right? Remember, select all. You'll notice that we have all these little islands in here, right? And if you hit 4 with your cursor over the UV editor, you'll notice you can click on these whole islands. Now, if I hit R for scale and I just scale up, you'll notice I'm actually making this texture bigger than the kind of uh, grid space, the one-to-one, -one, right? This is what tiling does. But you see how this texture now repeats pretty seamlessly? This is a pretty common trick for video games, right? Uh, really all environmental stuff, but video games in particular. So what you could do is you could find a cool kind of repeating pattern image that works and repeats pretty seamlessly. And you could take advantage of that to tile your uh, textures on your scene, right? We just kind of keep scaling these up. But that's how easy it is to tile, right? You just kind of go in here, select your seam uh, or your shell area, and you can easily just repeat these. Uh, I think I'll leave the uh, upper ceiling pretty small. We'll kind of just go for uh, these other ones. But this is how you basically tile your textures. Now, normally you wouldn't actually make your UVs bigger than the one-to-one, -one, um, if, particularly if you're painting an asset like we did earlier where we actually went and painted it. You don't want that at all, right? So usually for a lot of texture, you're kind of doing the um, kind of within the single quadrant grid, the one-to-one. -one. Um, but if you're tiling textures, it does tend to be acceptable and works on a lot of uh, software you just make the UVs bigger than the grid, um, even that, not always, right, um, to tile. And it's just a neat little trick for uh, getting your uh, texture to act a lot bigger than it is. So this is a big part of how tiling textures work. Um, and you see we can kind of get them to, but it's easy. You don't have to paint the texture. You're really just kind of getting in here and just uh, you know, scaling up the different parts. Now, in this case, I think that's good enough just to kind of show you guys what's going on with it, right? You just kind of go in here and you grab more stuff. But we're trying to find all the square ones in here, right? Because those are the ones that are going to be our kind of wall sections and stuff like that. All right. That'll be good enough. That's to kind of just show you the, the idea behind that. And then, of course, I can go to 4 for object mode. I can click on the floor by itself. Uh, remember... If you want to fully disconnect, you can always just click right on the base color word and remove, right? And you see how base color is back to being kind of a uh, white, yellow dot, right? You see how this is room floor, so I can click on that yellow dot, image texture, open, and I can just find something different, right? I can go to uh, stencils again, and maybe that'll be an interesting floor there. And there we go. Now, of course, 3 for face mode, Control a for select all. And there we can see is our floor. And you see how we can scale that up. And this is a great way to kind of uh, do environmental texturing, right? You find a repetitive texture that won't show any seams. And you basically scale the UVs to be bigger than the texture itself. And that's what allows it to repeat or be tiled, like tiles on a floor. So. That is tileable textures, right? So at this point, what I want to start to do is I want to start to append these into kind of a master scene, right? So in this case, I can go to my shading workspace, uh, maybe make this a little smaller, right? You can always left click drag on that bar. And I can start to append into here, right? Remember, that's file, append, right? File, append. I've seen that a couple times, and it's, uh, it's in one of the videos. Once you go to append, I'll set this back to kind of list, right? Remember, these kind of show you the different ways you can look at stuff. And desktop, what I can do is I can start to load in some stuff. I'm not going to load in everything. I'm just going to load in a few things just to get you good, good to go. 
Let's see, I'll do the uh, table UV blend because that's got texturing. Remember, you double click on the word, right? You double click on the file. If you double click on the file, it opens these up. You go to object, you double click on that, and then you'll see the objects you can import. Now, we already have a camera and a light, so we don't really need those. So I can just left click, control left click, control left click on just the objects, right? The braces, legs, the top. Then we can hit append, and there is our table. I can scale that in a little bit, move it up, kind of get some good position. Then, of course, I can go file, append. I'm going to go back out to um, the other scenes, and I can grab chair UV. Remember, you double click on the file. When you go to append, you go find where you've been saving your files, your scenes. You double click on that scene when you're appending, right? Because when you double click on that scene, it gives you this. You double click on object, and then you can see all the objects. Now, control left click gives you the best way to just select what you want. We don't want the camera light, we want the objects. So I'll hit append. R for scale, we can scale that down a bit. Kind of put it in a position there. Uh, remember, if you hit control C, control V, you can actually copy this, right? So in this case, control C for copy, control V for paste, will let you copy these objects once you have them in there, right? So pretty easy to kind of do that stuff, right? File, append, you go back up a couple, right? That little kind of arrow that's kind of going out and up kind of takes you back there. And then I just plug in the other stuff, right? I could, of course, plug in the columns and put them along the sides. Um, I think I'll actually do that, too. Let's see, where's the column? I think that's the right one. Remember, double click on it. Double click on the object one, and then there is that guy. Append. There's our column. We'll kind of move it into position here. R for scale, just scale it down a bit. There we go. Probably put it right there. Control C, Control V for copy. I'll copy that whole object. I'll shift left click to select both, right? And then we can do a quick uh, maybe Control C, Control V for copy there. Move these over to the other side. We could always mirror, but in this case, it's a modifier we'd have to turn off. And I'm just trying to get you guys to see that you can actually uh, control and paste, copy and paste. In fact, you'll notice if you go in here and grab an object and you right-click on it, you'll see copy and paste are right there uh, for the object-level stuff. In this case, I'm going to do file save as to save this as final scene, final room. So let's call this final room. There we go. We said we've got just about everything in there. Uh, last but not least, let's just get the uh, chandelier in here just so we'll have some glow. File, append. I'll go back out a little bit. There's the chandelier. Double click on it, right? Double left click. Go to the object folder, double left click. So remember, this is how we've been doing that append stuff to make the initial scene for the uh, big progress check. But also you want to do it for when you've got everything ready to go for this also. Control left click to grab those. We don't need the camera and light. Append. R for scale, right? Scale it down a bit. Let's move it up here. And that'll work well enough, I think. There we go. Get a chandelier. And now we can see we've got stuff kind of plugged in properly, right? Obviously, you can see we don't have everything fully textured because, you know, I was showing the concepts, the principles, the tools, and not trying to texture everything perfectly, right? But show you how to create textures, show you how to paint with stencils. But you can see we've got everything appended in there and any texture painting you did and saved, right, comes in with those appends, right? So when you bring in those objects, their UVs and their textures come in also, particularly if you've done them in the original scenes. This now puts us in a place where we want to set this up for uh, rendering and lighting. Now, in this case, I'm going to go to, maybe move this down a little bit. We have a light in here, right? I'm going to click on that light. Now, Eevee's on, and we can get a decent preview in Eevee, so I'm just going to go to the little V next to these. And I'm going to turn on scene lights, right? 
And once we've done that, we can actually start to see our light and where it's at. So I can bring this into the room. We can start to see it in the room here, actually lighting stuff up. Right? Now, in this case, I don't really want a directional light. We're not going to worry on getting the best lighting ever, right? Technically, we could do a lot with this to light it, but this is really about getting a light source that's more appropriate. Because our big light is coming from these, even though we could put a point light in for each of those, that's a lot. I'm going to mimic it close enough with the spotlight, right? Because it'll give us a, enough of a cone bouncing out here. Um, so we're going to kind of fudge it a bit. Um, but it's going to show us some basics for lights. So here's our light, right? It is one of our objects in the outliner. We make sure the visibility is turned on for it again so we can see the effect. If you go up to here, you can turn scene lights on there. Now you'll see that there's an orange, or not orange, but a green light bulb here now. So when you have a light selected, that green, that's curve or a triangle if it's objects, is now a light bulb. And you see we actually have a couple of lights. Point light, which is what it is by default. Sunlight, which is good uh, directional light. But in this case, we want a spotlight. Now, the angle for the spotlight is at a bit, well, of an angle, right? So I'm going to hit E for rotate. And I'm going to maybe do a little bit of view rotate here. Maybe a little bit of view rotate there just to get the cone more pointing straight down. And of course, I could bring this up a bit to maybe like there for now. And we could actually make the cone bigger for this, right? So when we're in this green light bulb, we see that there is the size of the cone. So you see how we can actually turn that up? So that size of the cone affects more of the scene. You can blend, which kind of is the fade at the edges of the light. And of course, we can actually adjust the wattage to make it higher, like maybe 3,000. And you see how there's more light? Probably give it a bit of a slightly off yellow color to match the glow of the bulbs. You see how now we have shadow casting. We have a spotlight that's creating light in the scene. Like I said, this is not ideal. This is really meant to just be give us a final render more than anything. But we now know that we already have that default light in the scene. We just need to turn the visibility on. Go to the green light bulb here, and you have your controls for what light you want to use, how intense, right? Turn the power up more, and it'll be a brighter light. Color, um, size, particularly since we're using a spot, that'll be the size of the cone. And even the blend is kind of the edge of the light. So give it a little bit of a blend there. And you can have it show the cone as well, right? So you have some options there. Now, Eevee gives you a pretty good kind of core render preview for this. But we still need to do a couple more things before we get our final render. One, I'm going to click on this little V right here, right? We've seen that before right next to the outliner. This brings this up. There is a section called View here, right? So when you click on that little V, remember there's a little V right here. Click on that. It opens this up. We know that's where edit is, where we can see things like our auto mirror and stuff like that. But view actually has something called uh, lock camera. And what we could do is we could actually have it lock camera to view. And then we go to view up here, and we can actually go to cameras, active camera. And now you see we can actually use our normal navigation, right? Alt left, middle, right mouse button to kind of get in here, give us our view. In this case, I might uh, try to get a better view from a better angle here. There we go. Then we get more stuff in the shot. So you might actually find your door opening. So we get a nice render from there. Something like that. I actually really want to show a bit of the glow off, so let's. Try to get a good view that shows off a decent amount of stuff. There we go. All right. But camera to view, and then kind of go to view uh, active camera right here is really cool because it actually lets you use alt, left, middle, right mouse button to navigate the camera shot. In this case, that's kind of okay. It's good enough for what we want. Uh, you can always get a couple of different shots uh, if need be, um, but I think that'll work well enough. So now what I want to do is I want to click on the last ball here, right? Because that's Eevee. This is your full render, right? Now, 
if I go down to the little kind of right below the wrench screwdriver, this kind of little microwave briefcase option, it's still using Eevee for rendering. What I want to do is I want to click on this and switch it to Cycles, which is Blender's full global illumination render. And you see how even with this one light source, you see how we're actually getting bounced illumination all over the place. We're getting global illumination. The light is bouncing off of the environment. So some of the things we could do to adjust this and make this look even nicer are, um, one, we could always go back in here and maybe turn the intensity for the light up a little bit more. Right? We can always play with that, maybe try 4,000, give it a little bit more brightness. We can also go right up to here, which looks like a printer icon. And you'll notice it's already set to uh, HD 1080, and that's fine, right? The defaults for that are fine. Um, everything's looking pretty good there. Uh, usually we want to go into uh, denoise, right? So we got a bit of noise here. There is a section called denoise, right? We can turn it on, and it renders a cleaner image for us, right? So we can turn the denoiser on if we want to. Um, we can open up, and that's like one of the denoise options, but you see how there's kind of more in here, right? So we can open that up. And one's kind of a viewport, automatic, one's for um, the final render. Open image denoise actually works pretty well. Um, you should be okay with that to denoise it. And then when you're actually happy with that, what we can do is go to render here, right? So see how there's a render menu right up here? And there's render image at the very top. And what this is going to do, this is going to do a final render for us. It's going to take a minute because it's got to go through and render and denoise it and all that stuff. But see, it goes through and it creates a final render for us. Like I said, kind of getting to this level is like the A level for the project. You know, if you just get the models done, you're going to be in pretty good shape with that. But you see how this, there's a lot less art involved in this, and it's just, you know, changing a few options, right? Turning a preference on here or there. Let this do its final render, denoise. take a little while with this. Um, you'll also notice your reflections will look more believable because it's actually using proper ray tracing of the environment. Um, we're getting bounce light under here, so we get all this extra fill or global illumination bounce. So this is kind of how that full rendering process um, works for us, right? How we can do a final render for this. you want to cancel the render or just stop it kind of where it's at, right, usually X, uh, escape will do that. And at this point, if you don't really worry about the glow lens flare, you can go to image and you can save, right? But technically, if you want, you can actually go into compositing here, tell it to use nodes, and what you can do is add a few nodes. Right, you can go to um, output viewer. Right, I usually kind of drop this in here, and then I'll kind of just plug in the image to the image here, and that way you can kind of see right in the view here. Uh, you'll notice view does have its own uh, kind of um, what is it? Let's see, it's um, click on this, right click. Uh, where, where was it at? There's a control for it. I'm trying to remember. Um, Uh, there we go. Uh, backdrop zoom out, right? Let me just zoom out a little bit just so you can see a little bit of that right there. And what you can do, though, because you notice you don't get that kind of glow bloom from uh, the default cycles render. So what you have to add is a uh, filter, glare, right? And what we can do is we can just plug this in between the render layers and the viewer, right? So we just kind of uh, drop it right on that line that was already connecting them. And then we just change it to say fog glow. And you see how you actually get that bloom kind of glow effect. You can control the threshold for it a little bit if you want to to make it a little less intense. Um, 
you put some stuff there. And then when you're happy with this, right, and you like the compositing, you go to rendering here. And you'll notice that there is kind of an option right here, right next to render result, a little pull down. And what you do is you can scroll down to viewer node, and then you'll actually see the full compositing here. And now in the rendering section, you can go image, save as, or save, and you can kind of just uh, save it as final render desktop. And then you'll see.